Tak, přátelé, pro ty z vás, kteří teďka přišli a uh, nevěděli, co se děje, tak koukáme na Dune Awakening Direct, což by uh, měl být takový. Nevíme, jak dlouhý livestream ohledně Dune Awakening, což je survival MMO, který se od fankomu chystá. A mělo by, uh, mělo by se dostat uh, několik trailerů, snad i gameplay, možná nějaký nový info. Minimálně by tam měl být nový trailer a nové věci. A jdeme na to mrknout, přátelé. Jsem to hodně, hodně zvědavý. Je to teda uh, inspirovaný i podle aktuálních filmů, co se týče, co se týče toho artového stylu, té vize. Takže to bude blíž k filmům. Hello and welcome to the very first Dune Awakening Direct, a brand new series where we'll be taking a look at all things Dune Awakening from our studio here. On Arrakis. Oh, <laughs> on this green episode, screen. we'll be Ooh. chatting to Joel Bylos. He's the chief creative officer for Dune Awakening here at Funcom, and he will tell us what players can look forward to this year, and he will share some news about our beta testing phase. And then we'll also be taking a look at the brand new gameplay trailer that we're just so excited to share with you all. But okay. first, we'll look at what it takes to bring the in the universe to life. From book right. to film to video game, let's get started with creating worlds. Hmm. Arrakis is this unrelenting anvil against which people are beaten and shaped and forged into something that's stronger. There's something very spiritual about that sand, which on the surface is really nothing, but underneath has a really diverse biological backstory. One of my favorite lines from Frank Herbert is when you end a novel, it's like a train coming into the station that doesn't stop. You just jam on the brakes and let the sparks fly into people's imagination. I was like a small kid when I played Dune 2, and I was like, "Arrakis is the first one the Fremen say." And the play into the heart of that. Pak jsem si koupil knížky, pak jsem si to přečet. Se to do toho univerza zamiloval ten. Já se za to můžu vlastnout. You know, where will you find water in the desert? Will you will you take it from others? So when we talk about survival, sure we start with the basic kind of survival, survive, and then when you've survived long enough, it's now time to think about political survival and how you progress within the universe. The approach we take when building a world like Arrakis is, is we kind of have to think about where are the stark lines and how do we draw these epic spaces? How do we make them feel huge and the player feels dwarfed by everything they see around them? The intention was every time we saw the desert, it was highly brutal. And if you went out into the desert without the right protection and without the right knowledge, that it was sure death. If we looked at references from some of the hottest deserts in the world, the visuals that we saw from. Some like a lot of strange, like what's the nature of like artovího, like směřování. So we've been working. Tak se inspirují v tom aktuálním filmu. Víš, že to má dost jako ukotvený nějaký jako styl, protože ono i v rámci vlastně her se to docela dost jako tříštilo, měnilo. I vůči, vůči vlastně, že minimálně třeba Lynchový, Lynchový Dune. Každá vlastně, každý projekt Dune. So we need to tak vlastně byl trošičku jako jiný styl. Emperor, že jo, ve stvůdácká Duna, Lynchova, Lynchova, že jo, ta uh, Lynchu film, pak ta miniseries, že jo, kde hrál s našemu z Čechů. Vždycky to bylo trošku jako jiný styl. Tady to vypadá, že bude víc jako ukotvený a bude se to držet vlastně toho aktuálního filmu, který mi přijde jako mega dobrý. And we got to look at the ornithopters from the inside and the outside, right? We got to walk around them and get a sense of their scale. Well, I think what they had done really well. I don't really just pull parts out. Some of them were quite articulous, I thought. Now, on a film, you're sort of led on a journey by the director and by the script. Whereas in a game, you have the opportunity to sort of create. I'm massive in it. A když nic jiného, když nic jiného, tak to bude prostě první pořádný 3D stvárnění Arakisu prostě ve hře. Víš, který si můžeš jako bezprostředně prohlídnout. By the way, teďka vlastně v Microsoft Flight Simulatoru, tak můžete lítat, že jo, ornitopteru. Ale osobně jsem to zatím neskoušel. Unreal 5 gives us 
flexibility through the blueprinting system. Ibona, děkuji. It allows us děkuji, to handle děkuji. amazing graphics through the rendering system, the lighting system such as Lumen. Lumen technology allows proper light bouncing. If I had to say one thing in the game that really benefits from Lumen, it's player crafted spaces. In our Kofra, case, it's like you build like a room and you place a window and the window lets in natural light and the light will fill the room in a way that feels real. Já jsem se dal, jak, jak to bude jako v té hře, no, ale... Before Unreal 5, in the olden days, you had to use what we called the LOD system. And that meant that you had to create assets at different LOD levels. So it doesn't slow down everybody's computer. With Unreal 5, we have this new technology called Nanite that breaks things down. Já jsem měl vždycky jako slavost pro Atreide samozřejmě, ale... As a company, this has made an amazing difference to the visual detail of the world. It allows us to create. Ale mi by se třeba líbilo mít možnost hrát třeba za nějakýho jako neutrálního, jako třeba pašeráka, víš? Jako kdo není bezprostředně spojený s velkým rodama. Ondras, děkuji moc taky, děkuji, děkuji, děkuji. Fantastic pre-production and planning tool. On June part two, we had some very complicated scenes, and we were able to previs all the way from Budapest. What the light was going to be doing well in advance. It's the only tool that I've used, I, I would say, in my 25 years of shooting, that is able to be used across a wide spectrum of films by different types of filmmakers. Hmm. The most iconic creature in the Dune universe is the sandworm of Arrakis, and so we've tried to represent this in the game in multiple ways. So as a player, your first steps on the open sand. You hear the hiss of the sand in the distance as the sandworm begins to move towards you. Nice. And when it gets close, the sandworm begins to move towards you. Nice. And when it gets close, the sandworm begins to move towards you. And at that point, you have only seconds to live if you cannot make it to rocky ground. So this is your first experience with sandworms. Whoa. And these are the little ones. When you go into the deep desert, when you're harvesting spice, the giant ring-mouthed sandworms that we've seen in the film. Will erupt underneath the spice blows and suck harvesters and equipment down into the sand beneath them. There's really only one rule: the sandworm will always come. <laughs> Humans have always had this innate drive to create something, to build worlds, whether it's in their head, whether it's in text, whether it's on screens, whether it's in games. Funcom as a company has been on this journey for a long time, creating multiplayer worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. We were there in the beginning with massively multiplayer online games. We've been there in the beginning with survival open world crafting games, and Dune is a combination of those legacies, bringing us forward into the future. It's the culmination of what Funcom means as a company and what we can deliver. And this legacy means that we need to really pay attention to what we're creating and how we create it for the fans, because I think at the heart of this, there's a lot of people out there who really want to live in the universe that Frank Herbert created, and they really want to live in the visual world of the films that they see from Villeneuve. And so we need to create the gap between those two possibility spaces and create a game world where people can live out their fantasies that they've taken from Dune. And yes, it's a huge legacy. Ale opět skvělý to, tam filmu, to hlavně fakt baví. Tak dropujou potichu, pomalu, víš co, tím tím, to je úplně super. Fancom, pověst. Fancom, tyjo, hele. To záleží, koho se zeptáš, no. Fancom. Dělá jako na Nexiles, například. Dělá jako na Nexiles, například. A myslím, že je to velmi jasné, že mediums dělá hodně z toho seminálu bůh. Hezká oka, tyjo. Now, of course, Villeneuve's movies have mesmerized the audiences with their adaptation of Frank Herbert's masterpiece. Uh, it's been showcasing the intricate politics, the very stunning visuals, and the harsh desert of Arrakis. And now, as we venture into the game, uh, the challenges of bringing this rich universe to life really takes on new forms. So, here to share this exciting process with us is Joel Biles, the chief creative officer mm. for Dune Awakening. Joel. Welcome to the first ever show. Thank you very much for having me. It's exciting to be here. I am so excited that you're here because I get to pick your brain. I have so Just many questions and I want to dive ahoy. straight into this. Uh, Dune Awakening is a survival MMO. Two words everyone watching will be familiar with, but what's your take on that? What is a survival MMO? Sure. Uh, so survival games are obviously a genre of, of games about like building yourself up from the bottom and surviving. Uh, MMOs are more about social interaction and, and you know how players work together to achieve big goals. 
and we thought, why not combine the two? You know, why don't we create a game? Because most of the survival games that are out there, they kind of, you, you once you get to a certain point of survival, you, it kind of ends, and that's kind of where you've gotten to. But what we thought was like, the universe of Dune is a perfect place with these politics and this intrigue and there's machinations that happen. So let's get players hooked on the survival and then bring them into the political survival of mm. the Dune universe. To se dalej, no, jak využil jakoby tu geopolitiku nebo celý, celý ten aspekt vlastně tý, jo, tý politika, tý intrikařiny vlastně, které je svět, že jo, extrémně známe, že jo. Irak je vlastně o tom, že jo, a vodě. So the player, first of all, needs to be searching for water. Um, they need to stay out of the sun, stay in black shade during the daytime, travel by Dramatic, night. I love that's, it. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the Fremen say, right? That's what the, yep. the Kitan al-Gaib says, says it in the book, right? Black, uh, black shade by day, travel by night. So the, the player needs to th worry about these things, think about the sunlight, think about where they are. So vývojáři, co četli jako knížky, halo. So yeah, there's lots of ways in which to get water. You can uh, explore dew fields and eat, you know, eat plant fiber to try and get water out of it. After a while you start to throw up because you can't really get too much water out of plants that way. And then the more, you know, the way I prefer to do it is to shoot enemies, take their blood, drink that. You just casually drop that right there. Uh, okay, so, so we're we're on our okay, side, uh, or just lick some plants, uh, whichever way you choose. You're gonna stay hydrated, which is very important. Yes. Yeah, stay hydrated at home, in and out of game. Uh, is, are there other resources I need to worry about? Yeah. So as a player, I mean, it's a it's a proper survival open world crafting game, right? So players will craft their entire arsenal, right? So they'll be they'll be collecting resources, you know. They'll be collecting stone, they'll be collecting metals like copper, iron, eventually forging steel, um, building up the equipment that they have at home. So they'll be crafting you know, all their weapons, all of their gear, all of their clothing, and they can of course craft themselves a base to live in, um, craft machines to help them craft bigger machines, which allow them to craft better weapons. Yeah, so post it's a cool utunu boudu to na Arakisu. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah, base building you just mentioned that's obviously very exciting. Yeah, base so building. I'm share a sneak peek of what this could look like uh, already on your TikTok channel. Very cozy. Why would I ever leave a home like that and like head out into the desert? Uh, but I'm sure you guys give us plenty of reasons to do just that. Um, is there anything special about the base building in this game? Yeah, so we, we took what we started with in Conan Exiles, our other survival game. Uh, we brought that over. Then we started to add to it, right? So we've now created a system for co-op building where you, will, you can place out holograms and other players can fill them in. So you work with your friends to build bases. Okay. You can yeah, also cool. save your base as like an architectural blueprint that you can then sell to other players on the exchange or you can That's give incredible. to your friends. So they, <laughs> no, no, you know, that's you cool. Really cool. One of the things that I really liked was that players were building the Taj Mahal. If you have a base, you have a blueprint and you can sell it to other players to be able to use it. That's a really cool idea. You can buy a blueprint off you and then place that out and build it. You can also be very creative. It's really enabling this sharing. It's really cool. It's really good. It's really cooperative. That's incredible. I I absolutely love that. Uh, well, I know my story arc is going to be really architect who harvests blood occasionally, but you know you do what you got to do. Uh, now now that I have my basic needs all met, you know I'm staying hydrated uh, <laughs> in some unkosher ways, uh, and uh, I'm having my base. Uh, how do I protect myself and my base from the world? Like, what well, what am I doing for combat here? So the game has a has a full leveling system, right? And and we we do this thing we call combined arms, which is like we have melee. We have ranged, and we have abilities, and we also have vehicles, right? So mm -hmm. players can use any combination of these in combat, right? So it's kind of creates this. That's like cool, že budeš moc stěl se naučit třeba Ben Ben Jesseret triky a podobně. Mentat prostě mentat schopnosti a tak. Co mazat? And you combine your, you know, so you're combining melee with abilities there, right? Or you can be a swordmaster and leap in with a knee charge, knocking people to the ground and then stabbing them. Or you can choose to be like a trooper. And you use your shigawai reel to pull you up like a grappling hook to pull you to high places where you can shoot down on your enemies with sniper rifles and shotguns. So there's a large variety of weapons that you can craft through our intricate crafting system. In addition to these abilities that you learn as you level up your character, so you kind of have this freedom of choice, and that's really what combined arms is all about. It's sandbox combat. That's what we're trying to call. Yeah, are those hard locked in classes? Or is there like a 
can I explore different skill trees? Like, yes. can I be a swordsman uh, or a swordsmaster and also use the voice? Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. You just have to find the right trainer in the world who'll teach you these things. So you choose in character creation, you make a choice of who was your mentor when you were young. And then you choose one of the things and that's your, that determines your set of starting abilities. But then mm. when you play the game, you find trainers in the world. You have to do things for them, but then they'll eventually teach you some of the way you know, the path that can take you down some of these skills and abilities, yeah. I love that. Okay, so uh, lots of things Marka to uh, explore there as a player and, and, and avenues. Děkujeme, děkujeme, děkujeme. Uh, all in order a to do so. Um, and maybe my friends <laughs> feel like it. What am I protecting? Like, how do I protect myself against sandworms? Like, can I fight them? Can I ride them? Like, what's what's the deal with them? Sandworms are, are, are like a tension mechanic in the game. We okay. want you to be really, really worried every time you walk on the sand. So you really need to think about what you're doing. So there is no way to kill or defeat sandworms. No, the only I, thing I, you can cannot. do, you just cannot. The only thing you can do is avoid the sandworms, right? So <laughs> so you craft yourself a thumper and place it out to distract a sandworm. Maybe mm. you use it to lure a sandworm onto some friends of yours or awesome <laughs> friends depending on how <laughs> As you one feel. Does. and 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 uh, and the, the other thing you can do of course is craft yourself a vehicle like we have a, a range of vehicles in the game including the iconic ornithopters and players will be able to craft these and you'll be able to use these to of course traverse safely right if you're in an ornithopter you fly above if you're on a sand bike or something like that you can move quickly across the sand hopefully a sand one won't get you if you time it right Hopefully. Hopefully, you know. That's always hoping. I, I love yeah. a constant looming threat. Sounds really stressful. Sounds perfect, actually, for a survival <laughs> MMO. Uh, now, you already alluded to some of the cooperative things one can do in game. Can you elaborate a little bit more here or dive deeper into this? Like, sure. Can I like fully go on a journey with someone and then like do tasks with each other? Like, what can I do with other people? Yeah. So, I mean, hook up with your friends, join together with a grouping system. We have a ping system so you can, you know, obviously point out things to players. Um, you, you will find different roles Deku. that you can assume Deku, based Deku, on the Deku. Kind of combination of abilities you want to bring with you. And then you can heal your friends, of course, get them up when they get knocked down in combat, things like that. And then, of course, you go on journeys like there's, there's, we have a system called the journey system. You can go on those journeys together and, and sort of explore the mystique of the universe. Um, through that, we also have a contract system. When you go to trade posts, you'll, you'll be able to take contracts. Um, your friend and you can go out and explore and do Deku. these contracts together. Deku, Deku, we have Deku. small group play, we have guild play. It's all kind of what you'd expect to see in a social experience. What's, what's your take on, on the politics? Because obviously the books and the movies, that's a big part of it, like the whole political intrigue. How predominant is that in the game? Oh, we, we want players to be able to dip into it. So you start the game kind of lost in the desert. Right, and then by the end of the game, maybe you're the next Baron Harkonnen. So as you play through mm -hmm. the game, you, you and who doesn't want to be? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good-looking man. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> as, as you make your way through the through the game, you you progress and you you sort of uh, meet these factions in the world. Right, the Atreides and the Harkonnen are at war. There's a war of assassins going on, as it's called. And as a player, you decide which side you want to help, which side you want to join. Then you you know start to partake in in missions for those factions. And eventually, yeah, you work your way up through the ranks of the factions and maybe you take on a position of power as well. So the politics are, you know, they're, they're designed to actually encourage players to develop their own politics around the sandbox system. So, so we have this Landsrad. The Landsrad will be demand that players do certain things. Okay. The factions need to work together or against each other to achieve these goals, right? So there's also this sandbox element to the politics. Which also then encourages like co-op play or uh, PvP play more. Co-op play or PvP play, yeah. Yeah, there's this, um, this kind of idea that, yeah, like when people have the same objective, but they're on opposite sides, it becomes a race between them to achieve that objective and they'll do oh. all sorts of dirty things to get to the top right. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, can okay. I opt out of politics? Can I just live my life? Oh, 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 You can, you can play oh, oh, however you want. I mean, the idea is to be a sandbox and allow people to approach it how they like. Um, we have a we have one of the rules, of, one of the pillars of the game is expression and customization. And that's not just about visuals, it's customizing how you want to play the game. So it's really thinking about like, well, I really like to craft and just set up my little crafting setup and sell things on the exchange to other players. So you can do that. You can basically live your life as a crafter. You can also be an architect, as we talked about. You know, you can be a pilot, mm. a scout. You're not really heavily involved in the fighting, but you go out and you, you craft maps that you sell to other players as well of the world. Map uh, where are we currently at? Like, uh, I know there have been betas uh, already. 
how many more of those are coming? What is the next one? What's the status of development? Where are we at? So yeah, we've been running betas now for several months. Um, they've been going really well. Uh, we're slowly inviting more people over time. So the game, yeah, I mean, we're not going to rush it out the door. We're going to work with our community and our players, and we're going to try and make the game as good as it possibly can be. It takes as long as it takes, man. It takes as long as it takes, <laughs> and you've got to do it well. So, um, yeah, so we're working with our, our community, and, yeah, betas are continuing, right, all the way through launch, and we're going to keep increasing the number of people in those betas, helping us stress test, yelling at us because they get eaten by sandworms, all those kind of good things. All, <laughs> all the good stuff. Uh, speaking of good stuff, have there been any like recent milestones you're particularly excited about uh, or anything you want to share about the current development? Sure. There's a, there's, a, there's a thing as a creative director I like to say that we get a few aces. Every time we make a project we get to make a few creative bets. Uh, there's a thing called the Shifting Sands, which is one of my most exciting... Uh, one of the things that makes me most excited about the game and that is this location in the world, it's a full PvP area, and every week the Coriolis storm sweeps in and completely alters the landscape of this area. No, no. I got to see that working for the first time very recently with, cool. with full landscape changing and people able to play, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see these things coming online. And I think it's something people haven't seen before in a game. So I'm excited to let let. Bude čas, mám pěkně rád, se bude vždycky nosit tam něco, to je tak cool. Přijde. Jsi šla bouře a změní se to celý. Chat mm. about the development and the process that you and the team are going through. Now, any last words, anything you want to say to your future player base? Yes, uh, thank you Andrei, everybody ahoj. for joining us on Děkuju. this journey. I hope today's show was like your first taste of spice, mildly <laughs> euphoric, slightly addictive, and leaving you wanting more. <laughs> I certainly want more of that that. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone watching as well, so remember for a chance to get an invitation to uh, any of the future closed beta tests, head on over to duneawakening.com and sign up for the beta, then head on over to Steam and wishlist the game. You can also join our Discord and follow our other socials at Dune Awakening. Also, of course, you can keep up to date on TikTok, Instagram and YouTube, where we will be showcasing regular sneak peeks into the world of Dune awakening now here is the moment that i'm pretty sure everyone has been waiting for let's take a look at our brand new gameplay trailer for dune awakening arrakis is a test few survive it is a test. Few survive it. But the humans that do awaken. Wow, Arrakis is truly the most dangerous planet in the universe. And you know what? I can't wait to go there. Now, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and join us on the next Dune Awakening Direct. It's not such a good one, you know. And at the same time, there's a lot of other things.
Já to dost dobře, to jo. Co? Ty prvotní totiž trailery, že jo, ty gameplayový, tak to trošku ve mně zanechávalo trošku jako pochybností. Aby samozřejmě, jako furt je to takový, jako že jsem zvedavý, jak to všechno bude jako fungovat dohromady. Ty herní prvky a ty systémy, ale vizuálně, vizuálně mi to jako docela jako chutná. Co mě to jako. Baví mě to, to jo. to dobře. Dobře. A to. Hele. Za mě, já si můžu projít potom Dunu, můžu si projít Arakis, jo? můžu si tam prostě procházet. Za mě je to takový malý splněný jako sun, že se prostě můžu v rámci 3D hry nějaký prostě procházet po Arakisu, to si myslím, že je jako dost cool. Uvidíme, se na to zvědavý. Jsem na to zvědavý. Uvidíme.